What's up all you cool cats and shop rats? Welcome back to Rule Hard Garage. This week we are back on the Honda Shadow VLX 600 uh, budget chopper. If you watched the video last week you would know that we just bought this chopper. Uh, well it's not really a chopper, it was a stock Honda Shadow. If you want to see that video you can click here. Uh, if not, keep watching because we're going to jump into building the bars, so let's do it. see we we're using the stock Honda handlebar base and what I did is I cut those off I think I gave myself a couple inches off of the bottom maybe two inches um, and then cleaned all the plating and the braze joint and all that up so that I had a nice solid piece to start with um, and then typically what I would do is machine a bung to adapt this piece to this piece so they'd slip fit together and then I'd weld around and that slug would kind of fill in the space between these and keep them all nice and tight and centered up. Um, I realized not everybody has a lathe. Now to join these pieces together, what I did is I used a piece of inch and a quarter, eighth inch wall DOM, which is one inch on the internal diameter, perfect to slip over the existing handlebar that we cut up and the new handlebar so that we can slip fit them together. Uh, I drilled holes in the sides of it so I could do a rosette weld on the new part up top and a rosette weld on the piece on the bottom. Um, because I wanted to do a stainless bead on the 45 degree cut, my intent was to paint part of the handlebars and leave the other half of the handlebars rusty. And I wanted the stainless to kind of show through, give it some style since it wouldn't rust. Unfortunately, Lindsay doesn't want the handlebars rusty at all. It's her bike, oh well, so we're gonna do what she wants. So I went ahead and bent up some top pieces um, in my bending die, which that's a special tool and I said that we weren't going to do that. But remember, you can always cut up old handlebars that you pick up at swap meets and stuff like that. That's how I used to build handlebars. You just have to use your imagination. Just make it happen. Uh, use what you got. Now the benefit to making your own handlebars is that whoever the bike is for, you can have them get on the bike, sit on it, feel it out, do they want them taller, do they want them lower, wider, narrower, whatever.
Bada bing, bada boom. So we're gonna give it a try it out. Ooh, almost lost him there. That'd have been fucking devastating. Whoop. Now that we got them all tacked up, we got them on the bike, we've test fitted them, we know that Lindsay's gonna like them, we're ready to weld. All right, so I was getting a lot of uh, porosity and the weld was getting contaminated in this uh, specific spot right here. Taking a drill and I drilled the weld out, um, cleaned it out really good with acetone and then took the air compressor and blew it out a couple of times uh, after pouring acetone in this hole to try to clean out any oil or anything that could be giving me an issue. And uh, we can finish welding these guys now. Well, it wasn't perfect, but it's definitely good enough. Uh, but my tungsten's dirty again, but I pushed through and I got it. I'm gonna throw the pulse on uh, and try to pulse around this so I can get a smooth uh, surface on this when I grind it out because I kind of got some undercutting going on. All the pulse is going to do, um, you know, I'm, I'm not changing my amps at all. So I'm at 115 amps. The pulse is actually gonna kind of reduce the amps that you're actually getting into the part. The pulse is going to come on at 115 so I can get my puddle started and then uh, when the pulse drops down it's going to let everything kind of cool which is going to help keep the bead tight. And So let's give that a shot. Yeah, I think that'll do the trick. I'm happy with that. If you have something like this that had chrome plating on it, and even though I went through great lengths to clean it and make sure all the plating and stuff was off, clearly it was not. And there's several spots here where I was challenged with uh, porosity and contamination in the weld. And then the challenge with uh, TIG welding and contamination in the weld is the second you get a little bit of contamination in your, your weld puddle, it jumps up onto your tungsten. The key to having a really nice TIG weld is having a nice, clean, sharp tungsten. Uh, so if you're welding and you get a little uh, contamination and it hops up onto your, onto your tungsten and then now you don't have this nice, sharp tungsten anymore, now your bead or your, uh, your arc wants to wander around and it makes it really difficult to get a nice, tight bead. Uh, the heat, as you're trying to bring your rod into the tungsten and the heat's kind of circling around, you'll get your... Uh, your rod to or your filler rod to burn off before you get into the puddle and it just creates all sorts of issues that makes it really challenging to have a nice weld. We're trying to get this chopper done and we want to ride this on a bitch. So fuck it. Full send. Let's right. do it. Ain't the same now. All the same now. I need space now. I'm my face now. Will you blame now? Gotta calm down. Now, now. Okay. Uh, Got insane at the same time. Uh, wonder which one I was last night. What? Still flying up and came down. Yeah, you can call that holy hang time. Whoa, in it even when it ain't right. Damn, been a minute with the stay, yo. Yikes, after it like I'm a canine. Uh, that really be a fact, dog. Uh, whoa, in the glass, I don't see the same through the pain. I'm a different man, same face with a different mask. Damn, time going fast. How long till I do stupid shit again? I don't know, fuck it. What I need, focus. Uh, I think they're pretty cool. Uh, I think the stainless turned out really good and that's what I had hoped for. So yeah, there she goes. Now, uh. Time's up. Do I really need to say something? Never want to make a play on it. Cause you living on a wave. Make talk when I'm in my spot but never go outside. I'm driving in my thoughts. I did a right tonight but now I'm back for more. Space I made when I was on the floor. I need the crown. I'm destined for my royalty. Passing up the view. I know there's more to see. Avenues to drive around, I gotta breathe. Give the phone to James, you know I gotta eat. Uh, feeling like God in this beat. Goddamn right, I'm a. My goal with this bike is to make sure that when I'm building things in the shop, I'm building things in a way that anybody can build them um, with a limited set of tools. It's nice to have a lathe and a tubing bender and all of this different stuff, but I really wanted to push myself to 
come up with things for you guys that you guys would be able to do in your own garage without a bunch of special tools. Um, but also because I wanted to expedite the process of building it, I wanted it to go very fast. And it's very easy for me especially to let my ideas explode and become really huge ideas which take forever and make everything really, really complicated. So this was me pushing myself to really reuse things, repurpose things, chop what you got. And that's exactly what we did with the handlebars. That's all that we have for this episode. Thank you guys. Time's up. Do I really need to say something? Never want to make a play on it. Cause you living on a wave. Holy fucking shit. Did you guys see that? I just roly chaired the fuck out of myself.